who we, all right, today, almost, my God, 11 months after picking up this pile of garbage, is assembly day. We're going to start assembling the 1976 RD400. Let's take a little look around the messy shop. We got, boom, powder coated frame, triple clamp parts. Oh, look at that. What's that? Dun, dun, dun. Mazzoli built engine. Okay, over here. Pushrod Fury. More chrome, tires, boxes of parts, organizer bin. Hopefully that helps. And <clears throat> first thing is, I like to get a rolling chassis together. It's a little premature, but first thing is steering stem. So the book's worthless because not the right stuff. Upgrading to the all balls, cage bearing, taper bearings, whatever you call them. So the way this goes together, this drops in cupped up. That's the wrong one. Let's go back. This goes on. Uh, like that but it's weird because there's still a gap underneath here so whatever that goes there this bearing goes inside so that makes sense this is the race that's going to get tapped into the frame and the steering head okie dokie time to pack a bearing so I gotta put some gloves on, I'll be back. Let's see, <clears throat> what are we looking at here? All right, so <clears throat> this bottom thing, according to all balls, goes facing up. And so now we got to get this down, it goes to about there and hits a taper. And then we will gently tap it in. So I drove the upper race in, but it sticks out. So I, again, this is not the stock configuration. I'm hoping it works. So let's see, it's definitely the right bearing, but uh, yeah, let's see how this, the rest of it goes together. But uh, yeah, I, I smacked that in, put a two by four on top and hit it with a dead blow hammer and uh, went right in. So I'll grease it up and start the assembly. We're just gonna, again, squish the grease down into the bearing like that all over the cage and the outside but you really got to get it down in there okay, final blast of grease on there boop, boop, boop. this guy drops in like that bam nice grease sandwich The bearing assembly we have all installed. We're gonna put the dust cap seven. It's the race cover and the adjuster ring eight, which is this. And I restored that myself. And it, it get, is the finish like, whoa, as good as everyone else on the internet? No, but I zinc plated that in my living room and uh, a bunch of other hardware. So. This is ready to go back on. So we're gonna put this together. So we're gonna see, this will go on. The upper triple clamp will go on. And then 10 and 11. So 10 is the crown washer and 11 is a big crown nut. And those just got chrome plated. So let's take a peek and see what I got. So if I look here, mm -hmm. 
see I should have this guy look how fancy that is wow in a big old chrome crown nut to go with it so I have that and that fresh from the chrome blader look at that and there's the upper triple clamp so we're gonna assemble this so we'll be back Okay, so we have a problem already. It's cool. Um, this can't possibly go on there. Can it? Oh, yes it can. Yeah, no it can't, because the race is too tall. Oh. Um, that sucks. That really, really sucks. What I learned was All Balls Racing does, they're great bearings. I love them. They've worked for all my projects, except for this one. So, can't use All Balls on an RD400. Can't be done because the upper race is too tall and then the whole assembly can't go together. So then I put it on a group in Facebook, said, hey, who's got the recommendation? And this guy, I you know, think he's being a jackass at first. He goes, oh yeah, check your dealer. I'm like, well, you have a new crap. And I was like, oh yeah, I never checked the dealer. Sure enough, I didn't go to my local dealer because it's too far away, but I go online I get genuine Yamaha upper bearings. Now I left the all balls lower bearing in place. I mean, that's fine. I mean, who cares? The bearings, right? The lower race and lower bearing match, upper race, upper bearing. So anyway, I got it. I had to take the all balls race out. Total luck. It's nearly impossible, but total luck I got that out and uh, didn't film that because really it's just a liability. Anyway, got the new race in, new bearings in. And of course there's one gap you always leave a gap the bearings everybody knows that it's all over the internet and now i got to finish putting this together so lower races um upper race and then the cover so i have everything all the part numbers written out in the order i need it so next is the upper race but the cover and then the, then the lock nut Right, so let's get this guy in here. Of course, we're putting a race on, so I'm gonna loop him up. There we go. Okay, up way, way overdid it, but okay. Here's the upper race. It goes on next. Wow, like we meant it. Like we meant it. Okay. There we go. This is super exciting. Wow, oh wow. Okay, upper race on. Then a cover, this is a cover. And again, look, all Yamaha genuine parts. How nice is that? I mean, Yamaha doesn't have to make this stuff for us, right? They could just be like, go oh, screw you guys. We, we're tired of making old parts but I guess they fit enough models that it makes sense for them business-wise. Okay, this is next. Upper race cover, on. Look at that. Like magic. We went over this amazing lock nut, look at that. Stripped it and replated it in my living room. So that's next. And then maybe this one. Look at that. Bingo. Oh, it's gorgeous. This is 
a shock adjuster, but does it work on this? Wow, look, it does. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Like a Hagon shock adjuster. Pro tip, Hagon shock adjuster. Tighten your steering stem lock nut. Or tension nut, whatever this is called. That's a little too much tension. Oh, I think they're way too much. All right. I think that feels right. Wow, good old Hagon. Okay. No instructions, again. And I'm putting roller bearings in the swing arm, and it comes with four bearings. I already put two on that side as an experiment. But, I'm just gonna lube this up. And then the other one too. I just don't want to hear any dragging in here. Get it all lubricated. You know, I don't have gloves on because they make a big mess just using them. All right, so here's my swing arm. Coating of grease. What's nice about the swing arm is you can grease it, but not this. This part won't get grease with the Zerk fittings. So you have to be really, you have to grease this thing up really well. So I put the bearings in with the flat side in like that. And there's a bunch of stuff I'm like using all thread and whatnot to make this work. But I'm gonna do it like this. I think it should be okay. I'm just gonna use this side. And this is, this is so bizarre. This, this is what rides around in there, right? So this is the actual axle. So we gotta grease him up. Spare no lube. And I should just, Uh-oh, what's happening on the other side of this? Let's see. All right, good. Sits right in there. So there you go. That's how you put in the upgraded needle bearing swing arm. These go on the ends. Nice. So that all makes sense. So we're gonna lube that up. Put that on there. 
boop like that. Oh wow, that pivots inside. Oh, there's bearings in here too. These are bearings. Yikes. Nobody told me that. Well, how do you get that lubricated? Man, this is dangerous. They really you should put instructions in. But this might offer better swing arm performance, but not if you don't lubricate the bearings. Jeez. Well, I put the swing arm in. It doesn't look like I needed any shims because those spacers fit perfectly. They're, they're not too tight, not too loose. The swing arm comes in from this side, slides through, the, sorry, swing arm axle, pivot bolt, whatever, comes through. And then it comes out on this side. Now, it wasn't, let me point out a couple of things. Of course, I didn't mark where the bolts went, but I saw in the manual that the bolts have a uh, six or a nine. What is that? Six. And <clears throat> there's a locking tab guy that goes here. Maybe I should. And this is the original axle nut. So that goes on next, <clears throat> I believe. Yep. And so the neck gets tightened down and then uh, you bend over that. So I'll read all the specifications and get that properly tightened. You've seen torque before. These will be torqued properly too. Those I'm pointing at to do with my finger and move on. Big washer on the back with a bigger hole, smaller washer in the front, crown nut. The bottom one, there's no washer, there's just, or the inside, there's just the washer here and the crown nut. So I already did one side, so do the other. And then I probably people freaking out. I don't know. I think this is, you can use it in cables. So why can't you use it here? So it's like friendly for stuff you find in a cable. Oh, anyway, maybe red rubber grease would have been a better choice. So <clears throat> for doing this, there's three washers per side. And again, they're plated them. I mean, they came out looking galvanized, but whatever. You know, I did it myself though. These bonus points for that. So, burp. If you're doing a restoration, good luck finding stock shock absorbers. And those things are impossible find and then the other thing it's pretty darn cool is that my buddy Bob Mazzoli who sold me this wreck also is a pretty good hookup for chrome plating a pretty good really good so sent a ton of goodies there for the chrome plater get that on. I'm only putting this on finger tight for now and then I'll go through and torque everything. Oh wow, wow, yeah. Set my destination. So uh, there they are. Hagons installed. On to the next thing. Mm -hmm.